So now we're going to introduce a systematic process whereby if we have a logic function in a format, which is a sum of min terms, or in fact, a product of max terms, as we'll see later on, uh, we can produce the minimum two-level design algorithmically. Uh, we don't have to go through all of the rules. We don't have to figure out whether we're going to be simplifying this or expand that term or whatever. This KMAP process is going to give us the best answer guaranteed. Now, there are some caveats about this, as we'll see, and there are some extra tricks later on. But in general, uh, what you'll see is that this is a very useful tool, such that it is, in fact, baked into some of the uh, software that people use sometimes to do their logic simplification. Uh, but we need to learn this technique ourselves so we can do it on paper, so we can understand why it works, how it works, and what it gives us and what it doesn't give us. So it's called Carnot Maps and it gives us a systematic simplification for Boolean functions. What we do is we enumerate variables uh, that are uh, positive and then negative, and then we're going to list them vertically and horizontally. I'll, I'll show you an example first. This will be a lot easier. So we take a two variable came up. This is the nicest, simplest, easiest version of this. A two variable function, a function of A and B, has four possibilities, min term 0, min term 1, min term 2, and min term 3. These are when A and B are both 0, when A is 0 and B is 1, when A is 1 and B is 0, and when A and B are both 1. Those are the four possible inputs. And a Carnot map lists those out in such a way that we can actually make some interesting simplifications. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, our variables, A and B, and we're going to list them, half of them, vertically and half of them horizontally and then we're going to write out all the possibilities for these variables a could be zero or one b could be zero or one pretty straightforward there are only four possibilities and then all we do is we write out the min term for that input combination when a is zero and b is zero that's min term zero when a is zero and b is one that's min term one min term two and min term three and then if we have a function that is written out as a sum of min terms, we can draw the truth table in this Carnot map such that we can get some interesting simplification. Now, this two variable version, there's not a lot we can do that we can't just do on paper anyway. So it's not going to give us a lot, but it's a good introduction. So here, a b prime, which is min term two, goes here. And a prime b, which is min term one, goes here. The other two are marked as zero because those min terms are not part of the function. And then this, in fact, is the truth table. We can say 0, 0 gives us a 0, 0, 1 is a 1, 0, sorry, 1, 0 is a 1, and 1, 1 is a 0. So that's a two-variable map, and it's a good sort of introduction. Here now is a three-variable map. Now, with the three-variable map, again, we're going to put half of our variables on one side and half on the other side, and you could do the map vertically, you could do it um, horizontally, you could do it vertically. I'll show you an example of this same map um, vertical in a second, so you can see that it doesn't make any difference. A is the same, we list 0 and then 1. B and C, we're going to list in a pair, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. And this is the mathematical genius of Carnot maps. By listing the variables in this order, what we see is that only one variable changes from column to column. 0, 0 becomes 0, 1. 0, 1 becomes 1, 1. So here, C changes from 0 to 1, and then B changes from 0 to 1, and then C changes from 1 to 0. And we list all possible combinations of B and C. Combined with all possible combinations of A, we have all eight min terms listed. They're listed in a little bit of an interesting order, intended so that adjacent cells differ by only one variable. And traditionally, when we write out the uh, variables in a Carnot map, we list them out in this direction, A, B, C, from left to right across this line. Now, you can put the variables in any place you want. Uh, you can put B, C, A, uh, but that's going to make it a little bit more work to go from the truth table into the Carnot map. So it's, it's good to sort of follow that tradition. Uh, that way we know which one's which. So again, this is the input combination 0, 0, 0. Down here is the input combination 1, 1, 1. And we have the names for the min terms. Note that those names are 0, 1, 3, and 2, because we flipped these last two columns, 4, 5, 7, and 6. And we can also write out those min terms directly, a prime, b prime, c prime. And then this one's a prime, b, or a, b, c prime, etc. So this is the... Uh, three variable map, and I told you that I would show you an example 
of a three variable map in the vertical direction, we can do exactly the same thing. We can say, here's A and here's B and C. That's how we did it before, right? And we drew the map this way. So instead, we're going to say A, B, and C. And in this way, what we get is A and B could be 0, 0. They could be 0, 1. They could be 1, 1. And again, don't forget that we're going to say 1, 1 here instead of 1, 0. And then 1, 0 here. So that at, for each row, only one variable changes. And then C is just going to be 0 and 1. And we draw this out like this. This will give you the same answer as doing it horizontally like this. And you'll get good practice drawing these Cardo maps out and making good use of them because it's a really useful tool that we're going to use an awful lot. Not just in building our initial circuits, but when we start to build out circuits that have memory, we're also going to make use of these Cardo maps an awful lot. Here's just restating adjacent cells differ by one variable. And we can list where each um, variable is positive or equal to one or in the positive form in its min term. A is one here. C is 1 for all four of these, and B is 1 for all four of these. And again, vertically, C is 1 for all four of these, B is 1 for all four of these, and A is 1 for all four of these. Now, if we wanted to do this with four variables, we could also do that same thing. Four is about as hard, as high as we go, as you'll see. Um, but here are the min terms and max terms of four variables. You can see them all listed. Again, remembering that min terms and max terms are ambiguous unless you know how many variables we have. So this is min term zero, and it corresponds to a prime, b prime, c prime, d prime. In a three variable system, min term zero correspond to a prime, b prime, c prime. So the min terms from zero to 15 are listed like this. And again, they just follow the binary encoding of the number that corresponds to that input combination, right? 1100 0, 0 is 12. 8 and 4 make 12. So we treat this first column as the 8s, then the 4s, then the 2s, and the 1s. We add up the binary encoding, and we get the number for the min term that corresponds to that particular input combination. Similarly, max terms, we have the opposing um, variable. So this is A, B, C, D prime. This is a prime or b prime or c prime or d because we want to make the function zero for that max term and we call that max term 14. When you put this into a Carnot map, it looks like this. So this is the four variable Carnot map and we're going to have a pair of variables vertically and a pair of variables horizontally and we list out the min terms in this same sort of sneaky way where we flip the uh, two rows so instead of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. And then the same thing for, that was column, same thing for rows. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. And these eight min terms have A equal 1. These eight min terms have D equal 1. These eight min terms have C equal 1. And these eight min terms have B equal 1. And we'll see why that's useful in a second. <clears throat> it's important to recognize that each term in, um, in a Carnot map is adjacent then to four other terms, and each term that it's adjacent to differs by one variable. And here's what I mean by that. Take, for example, min term 5. Min term 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, or a prime b, c prime d. It's different from min term 1 in b, because b is b prime from midterm 1, and b is just straight b in midterm 5. And it's different from midterm 13 in a, a prime, and this is a. It's different from midterm 4 in d, this is d, this is d prime, and it's different from midterm 7 in c, this is c prime, this is c. And so the trick with this is by arranging the, the min terms in this kind of a pattern, what we say is that for each pair of min terms in a Carnot map, we know that they differ by only one variable, okay? The, the, the D is different here. The C is different here. And again, this all sounds like interesting theory, but what the heck is it good for? Well, um, we'll talk about the edge adjacency in a second. Because adjacent cells differ by one variable, we can simplify by collecting adjacent cells. Each pair of cells differs by one variable, which means if you have a pair of cells that you collect together in a group, 
then you can read off of the K-map with practice. It's a little bit of work, but it's not too hard. You can read off of the K-map the, the simplified term in standard form that these two min terms correspond to. Here's how it works. So this is min term zero and this is min term one. Okay, min term zero is a prime b prime c prime. Min term one is a prime b prime c. Now we can just take our regular logic process. We can take a b c prime, a b c, and we can, uh, using distribution rule, take the a prime b prime out. c prime or c then is the, the term that would be resulted from that distribution. But we know that c prime or c is one, and that means that it goes away. And so from a prime b prime c, a prime b prime c prime, a prime b prime c, those two together can be simplified down to a prime b prime. How do you read that off of this chart? Well, what you do is you look at the chart and you say to yourself, which variable changes within this group? For every term in this group, a is zero. That means we know that a prime, the zero version of a, has to be in the term that this group represents. For every one in this term, b is zero, which means b prime has to be in the term. But for the c variable, for this member of the group, the c is zero, and for this member of the group, the c is one, and we know that if the c is zero here and the c is one there, then by this logic, the c will go away and it isn't present in the term. So that's the process you use. Look at a pair of terms in the group and say to yourself, well, c changes. If c changes, it's not in the group. And so a is the same, which means a is in the group, and b is the same, which means b is in the group. So this is the process of Carnot map simplification. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to give you a bunch of examples of that. Uh, but before I do, I want to remind you, not remind you, bring your attention to one interesting quirk of Carnot maps, and that is that not only are, is each term adjacent to four other terms, every term, even the terms on the edges, are adjacent to four other terms. If you look at min term six, for example, it is adjacent to min term four. And how can you tell? Well, between min term six and min term four, a prime is constant, b is constant, c changes, and d is constant. So min term four and min term six, if they were a group, it would be a prime b d prime. That would be the group, and you could just read that off. But you have to know that these two terms are adjacent. They sort of wrap around. And so this is why I draw these k-maps as a torus, just to show you. Now, this is a pretty complicated-looking picture. We never actually use a torus, but it's worth recognizing that topologically, this thing is a torus, because uh, min term 0 is, or is adjacent to min term 8, and min term 6 is adjacent to min term 4. So the top edges wrap around, and the and the side edges wrap around. And so for any given term in a four variable K map, it's adjacent to four other terms. In fact, the same is true for any K map. For this term here, for this K map here, it's adjacent to four other terms. It's adjacent to this one, this one, but that's the same one, uh, and then this one and this one. So in the next video, we'll do some examples of this so that you can see how you would go through the process of taking uh, some of Minterm's representation, putting it in a K-map, simplifying it, and getting the standard form out of it.